All right. So the last uh, lectures today, we have four what we call quick lectures, which is 20 to 30 minutes. And, uh, huh? 30 minutes. 30? Okay. Where well, we won't have the sort of discussion panel on stage afterwards, but we have a couple of minutes for a quick Q&A afterwards. So the first speaker up this afternoon is Morten Mun is it Munchau? Munchau. Munchau. First time I met Morten, he uh, was very serious and he asked me probably a hundred questions during uh, dinner we had in uh, Copenhagen, one of the Nordic Race Cup to events, and they were all very you know, focused like on science and stuff, and uh, Morten probably thought I knew everything about coffee, but I realized after that session that I don't know anything about anything in coffee. Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody does. You've been researching, uh, I think your first uh, research was uh, cappuccino foam, which was very interesting. So without further ado, Martin Muncho. Thank you. It uh, was a great pleasure to be here again. Um, today I'm going to tell you about a research project uh, that I announced in Rimini uh, 2013 that we actually did conduct. Um, and I'm going to show the, you the results. It's a project uh, in a collaboration with the University of Copenhagen, uh, SCAE, and the Coffee Mine, uh, uh, and that's you know my company. Um, and the student who did all the hard work is uh, Tina, and uh, the professor of sensory, um, uh, associate professor of sensory science, David. Um, uh, did a lot of the you know uh, research design, and we, we uh, together did uh, the, the project. Um, Coffee mine is uh, Ida, uh, me, and Torben. Ida is a century scientist. Uh, she did a presentation last year, um, and uh, she does all the SCAE and stuff. But we all uh, we do education consultancy research and events. That's kind of the activities that we do. And this is an example of the research that we are uh, part of. Tom is a green coffee specialist. He's not full time uh, in coffee mind. He did uh, uh, his uh, uh, PhD in microbiology of beer brewing, but he did his postdoc in uh, uh, coffee processing in Kenya and Brazil. He's been running some trials on coffee processing. Um, so um, we do a project together. So the purpose of this uh, of this uh, research project was to uh, map relationship between roast profile and flavor. There's not a lot of that out there. Um, if you look at the scientific literature, you will find something like you know they try to roast it really quick and really slow, and you know that's the profiling right there. And that, that's not exactly how we work in the specialty coffee business. And this is a really good example of you know why the commodity business research is really difficult to make relevant for us because it's completely different questions. So when you work with, uh, as a roast master, you have some completely other uh, concepts than you do in the commodity. So what we do at, uh, at the university and SCAE is that we try to take the questions coming from the specialty coffee uh, uh, community and then funnel it into research so that the research is relevant for the specialty coffee business. And that's, that's, this is an example of, of, of this and we've done I think uh, this is only one of six projects that we've done in a year, uh, or in one and a half year now. Uh, so there's a lot more to come, and uh, uh, you'll see that in SCAE's um, uh, publication chapters. So, um, who wouldn't like to map the sweet spot of coffee roasting? Um, and this is not, you know, easy because clean cup is a is a uh, is a difficult concept to handle scientifically. Uh, but this is what we uh, uh, tried to do here, and we also tried to, to make a, a, a framework to do the uh, SCAE certification system evidence-based. Because we faced this when we created the certification system that if you, you know, make practical tests and theoretical tests, you have to test people on something that's evidence-based. It cannot just be, you know, all the collected rumors you've heard on the internet uh, that you test people in because, you know, what if it's wrong? So we really face this, you know, if you test people, you need to do some research to be sure that you're just not, you know, that your test makes sense. So this is um, uh, also the purpose of, of this project, to, to feed into the certification system. 
So, um, we try to, uh, uh, or I try to, you know, define different rose defect because, you know, if you don't know what clean cup is, because it's a bit too fluffy, then, you know, let's start from the other way around. You know, we know what a rose defect is, and then perhaps we could, you know, make a, a mapping of the, 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 the sweet spot at, at least, you know, defect three. It might not be very subtle, you know, but that's a starting point. And this is just, you know, uh, the collected uh, roast uh, parameters that I just, you know, mapped out for the project. Um, uh, new would have been added, as you also saw uh, um, yesterday, Rob has added some more. I would also have done that if I did the project now. Uh, but, you know, things uh, progress. Um, so, um, here you can see uh, the idea of the project, you know, let's imagine that of these roast parameters that I showed on the previous slide, we can we can think of um, uh, different spaces of you know configuration of these parameters to to make up a certain roast profile. You might have the, the easy ones are too dark and too light, and then scores underdeveloped and baked is a roast defect. You know that I. Uh, could be a, that I found as a roast master, and when I Google on the internet, uh, you know what 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 kind of roast defects uh, could I find that had some uh, you know scientific counterpart, uh, and it's not all of them. Uh, sometimes it, you know you, you can read uh, the drum is too hot. How do you heat up the drum without the air? Or what does that you know? It doesn't really make sense. Uh, so uh, so I tried to make um, some different. Uh, uh, Roasting defects uh, like these. So I defined the reference, uh, and you know, this is just as a crude reference. I think you know, if you if you if you've got a, a roast profile where you've got the first crack in nine minutes and three minute development time, it's probably not the best uh, roast profile, and it also depends on the coffee. But we had to uh, have something that might work as a reference. And then uh, we took the reference, and then the light one was just one that was uh, terminated way too early. Uh, so it was really a light, I would call it a defect, it was Actron uh, 115. You know, somebody might be able to nice, uh, make a, a nice roast profile on that, you know, a, a, a roast that, that, that light. Uh, but it, it's clearly too light, at least, you know, uh, when you see it uh, in, in commodity uh, terms. And we also did a consumer study. So this was the light defect. The dark defect was roasted to Actron 45, and uh, all these uh, tended to uh, to follow the same uh, roast curve, um, but it was just terminated uh, early or late. Then the scorched one uh, I defined as you know as being very, way uh, quicker in terms of time to first crack, but also in development time compared to the reference. So you've got uh, first crack uh, after five minutes and one and a half minute development time. So the overall roast was six and a half um, in a one kilo roaster. Um, the baked one had the same time to first crack as, um, as the reference, but had uh, a six minutes development time. The underdeveloped had the same development time as the reference, but had too much, uh, too much time uh, to first crack. So my, my theory here is that this is also, what Rob talked about yesterday, lack of pressure development, and this uh, so this is more physical uh, 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 reason for the defect, the uh, the material not uh, uh, swelling enough because the pressure uh, is not developed uh, uh, developing quickly enough, and the baked one is more chemical because it has stayed uh, too long in the, the pyrolysis uh, dry phase. So I tried to make some that you know you could come up with probably other roasting defects, but I tried to make some, uh, some defects that made sense in terms of some really crude and specific um, roast profile references such as time to first crack and development time. Because when you do research you have to make it really, it has to be over, it's better to have it over, uh, over uh, simplified in the beginning and then you can add complexity if you get a result. Okay, so that, that's it had to make sense uh, and be really, really simple. So this is the parameter space that we tested. And uh, we took these um, six different uh, samples uh, through what's called a descriptive uh, analysis. That is, that is a laboratory uh, sensory analysis. 
um, where you have um, aroma attributes and uh, something that I will call meta descriptors. I'll explain that later. And then we also did a consumer study, study where we got uh, 92 consumers uh, tasting the same cocktails. And then we also did some aroma uh, analysis uh, to find some marker molecules for the different roasting defects. We did this uh, together with the Nottingham University that we collaborate with. The point is um, with descriptors. When you when you work as a sensory scientist, you only work want to work with descriptors where you can find a specific food substance that you can have as your reference, and that is a very concrete or very specific reference. You know, so you can have a specific acid, sugar, bitter uh, substance, uh, a specific tobacco, a specific licorice, and and if you've got a coffee. It's not all of the types of licorices out there that's relevant. So you need to find the specific licorice that that you uh, that you actually find in this coffee. Um, so in, when you do a laboratory uh, sensory profiling, you need to find specific food substances so that everybody in the panel agree that this is the descriptor that we agree upon when we taste this specific coffee. So that's also why you cannot really use uh, the Lenest du Café. Uh, for this, because it's not specific enough to match the samples that you could uh, come, uh, come uh, uh, across. Um, so you need to, that, this is one of the handcraft aspects of being a sensory scientist, is to find the, the, the correct references, and often it's just in the supermarket, but it's an iterative process with you and the panel to find the right specific substances uh, so that the, the panel is, is, um, is uh, calibrated. And then you can see here, we've got clean cup, and we just, you know, thought, what is clean cup in roasting? There's a concept of clean cup in green coffee. How could we kind of, you know, make sense? It would be great if we could, you know, make something similar in coffee roasting. So we, we thought that clean cup was the most abstract uh, descriptor that you, we could come across. So we had to make something that could bridge between something more specific and then this very abstract thing that we couldn't really nail in, in, the, in the lab. So this is uh, approximations of the clean cup uh, because complexity, harmonic and balanced is something that's a bit more easy uh, to handle uh, as a descriptor. But can you see here how there's a kind of a, um, a difference in the, the, the nature of these? Here you can get specific food substances and this is more meta references that you have to either learn from somebody or you know, have to make you know, just intuitive uh, sense. It's something else. So in sensory science, you want to work only on this level, and you're very skeptical on this level. You're also very skeptical on hedonic uh, descriptors, because, you know, what is it, you know, who likes it? Um, that's only valid in consumer studies. So for these specific um, samples, these were the descriptors that was agreed uh, by the panel uh, to uh, describe all six references, or the, what distinguishes uh, all six references. Um, and uh, I wasn't part of this because we thought uh, uh, the panel was food sciences professional uh, panel. They've got a pro uh, people who are paid to be panelists and you know one week it's cheese, another week it's wine or even your know, different kind of uh, fish or whatever. They, they test everything up there. So they have a, a generalist panel and these people, they are screened to be really, really good at identifying and uh, 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 what's it called, distinguishing. Um, so they are uh, really skilled generalists. Um, so if we got some good results for them, then we really, you know, had some. Uh, they they had come came from a complete blank canvas when it came to coffee. So that was good. We thought. Uh, later, I, I've seen, you know, how future uh, studies will be different. Uh, Ida and I, we are also established a, a, a professional coffee panel in Copenhagen now, uh, where we have coffee people in it. It's much easier to, to, uh, to get some more specific or even work with some of the uh, clean cup or, or these meta descriptors with people from the coffee business because they've got years and years of actually calibration. Um, so um, in the future, I will be part of the also descriptor uh, 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 identification, and also we will use our um, uh, professional panel. So here you can see uh, in the laboratory profiling, you work with a 15 centimeter um, uh, uh, line uh, where people put down their scores, 
and the consumer survey, it's a CATA methodology where the consumer just gets a piece of paper like this and then they just have to tick every time uh, this descriptor makes sense in terms of the uh, reference that they have. So that's, that's how the consumer uh, data were uh, collected. So um, in, in a sensory profiling, let's say we only have three um, uh, samples. I just want to show you how it works. Um, you cannot just you know, taste all three of them and then say something. You need to have them in triplicates so that each sample you get in triplicates. These triplicates will then be completely randomized so there's, there's no sequentiality um, at all. They'll get a, a three-digit random number so that all the assessors has got no idea what they are tasting. They've got no idea and each assessor has got their own unique uh, uh, sequence through these uh, samples so that, they, um, so that there's no carryover effect and other uh, types of confounders or biases. And then they typically score between 10 and 20 descriptors per sample uh, and then they score it on this 15 inch scale. The interesting thing here is, uh, here you get information on the, uh, on the food substances, but you can also go, you can, when you do these data, you can also, also analyze the panelists' individu individual performance. So this is um, uh, a food substance uh, or one of the samples on, these, uh, on, on seven different descriptors. So you can see each person scored uh, the same descriptor three times because it was in triplicates. So you can see how well they scored the same descriptor on the same food substance the same every time they got it without knowing it. Some were really, really consistent. And then the dotted line is the panel average. So you can actually see how well every time you describe a food substance you also make an implicit evaluation of each individual uh, uh, assessor. So Ida and I, we do uh, 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 sensory profilings like this, but we also do uh, individual uh, sensory performance analysis because it's actually the same methodology uh, because you've got both analysis every time you've got uh, an anal analysis, but this, this is something else. Okay, <clears throat> so how did it turn out? It turned out exactly like this. Um, here you can see each uh, descriptor and then you can see here the average score for each descriptor. Uh, and then uh, these uh, um, letters here will tell you if they are statistically significantly different um, from each other. So here you can see the intensity of the normal, baked and underdeveloped. Um, it, they look a bit different, but statistically they are not. This is one group. And then you can see that the scorch and dark roast are very different and the light roast uh, has got its complete own category here. So it's very low in intensity, and the scorch in the dark is very high in, in intensity. Not a surprise. Um, we don't, won't go through all of them, but one of the interesting thing here is, you know, you can see complexity. It seems like there's, um, uh, that the, the normal roast has got the highest complexity, and then it goes uh, down, where the light uh, the roast has got the lowest complexity. Um, yeah, and that was only some of the descriptors, then we've got uh, other descriptors here. Uh, my point by showing you this, uh, the last slide is that we actually got some uh, really good data. The only descriptors that didn't uh, turn out uh, uh, to behave different was Nochi and Caramel. That didn't seem to, to, uh, to, um, to be very different on the different um, uh, uh, roast defects. So uh, it's really good for the, you know, the, the general uh, research setup that you've got really statistically significant differences uh, on the descriptors when it comes to the different roasting defects. When, if you look at something called a PCA uh, plot, you can see, um, you can see how um, the different descriptors groups uh, according to the uh, different uh, samples. And, um, here you can see that the scorch and the dark roast, uh, they cluster with the bitter intensity, licorice, tobacco, bitter, sweet, aftertaste, burned. Um, and then you can see the, the light roast uh, has got this nutty caramel, uh, citric and sweet. Um, but the most interesting thing, thing here is that the normal is actually very close to the complexity. 
um, which is interesting, isn't it? I mean, for the overall purpose of the research uh, is that to, to see if there's something called a sweet spot. And I would say complexity is a positive thing. Um, it's a bit dangerous to, to say that, but uh, you know, if we if we should make sense of this, it looks like uh, acidity, dark barriers, uh, and complexity um, uh, is close to the normal uh, rose profile. And here you can see um, the, on the consumer data. On the consumer data, uh, you can also see that by far the biggest uh, effect was the difference between light and dark. Um, and that, that drives, these percentages says something that are, the x-axis it describes 80% of the variation uh, of the samples and the y-axis uh, only describes 30%. So it seems like dark and light drives the main, uh, biggest difference between these samples, which is probably not a surprise. But you can still see here the normal, even for the consumer data, the normal is clustering together with the harmonic, balanced, pleasant, um, and that's that's really interesting for the you know sweet spot evaluation, uh, I would say. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, this actually you remember that uh, the consumers they they just tick boxes. So this is the frequency with which boxes are ticked for the different uh, descriptors. And as you can see here, this is the maximum difference between um, uh, samples. So um, only uh, four people ticked a box for thin on the dark sample, which is not a surprise. But 65 ticked, uh, ticked a box for the light uh, when it came to thin. And then strong, powerful, the dark, uh, 60 uh, people uh, ticked a box uh, for the, uh, on, uh, the dark box on the strong, powerful descriptor, and only one did for the light. So here you can see uh, these, are the, uh, these are the descriptors that, make, that distinguishes the samples most. And uh, I've arranged them so that there's a decreasing amount of difference. And there's not, no time to, to go through all these. But you can see that there's some really interesting uh, findings here for the consumer uh, test. They were really able to, to distinguish. Um, and uh, interestingly uh, enough, you can see here, balance, pleasant, and harmonic, our three meter descriptors were highest um, uh, for the normal, and also sweetness. And you can see that also in a bar plot here. The normal was preferred. And then there's, uh, because they were also asked, I'll just show you, they were asked, um, how much do you like the coffee? This is the overall hedonic uh, score, and this is, then this is attributes. And there was, um, um, so this is the how much do you like the coffee attribute, and the normal was uh, preferred, uh, at least to all these you know, you can see statistically you cannot distinguish between this is this uh, sample is part of the A cluster and the B cluster, but it seems like there's a trend. Um, I'm not going to, uh, to to talk too much about the, the chemistry, but this is the chemical analysis. The main point here is that again we see similar trends to the uh, sensory uh, data, and that's good uh, for the overall um, um, the overall project. It seems again like light and, and dark and scorched. Um, uh, it gives the biggest uh, difference between the samples, and then uh, it seems like the light is um, uh, uh, correlates with um, acidic uh, compounds, and this is also a fruity uh, fruity uh, compound. So uh, we are still writing up uh, the data uh, for publication. So um, I'm not. Uh, we haven't uh, analyzed this completely yet, um, but the interesting thing is that the chemical data uh, uh, gives the same uh, similar picture, picture to the sensory, which is uh, not a given. Um, so that's that's really interesting. Yeah. So that's pretty much the the conclusion. Um, yeah, different roasting profiles affect sensory perception and acceptability of coffee. This is basically everything I've just been saying. So. The interesting thing here is that we've got, uh, we've got, um, we really got some uh, results. 
Uh, if I should go through some disappointing aspects here, you can see here roasted rye bread. I think roasted rye bread, bread personally is a really, really good reference for the baked roast profile. But notice here, it seemed like um, uh, the baked one um, didn't really, uh, there was not a big difference. The point here is that there was not a really big difference. So you can see here, uh, roasted rye bread was approximately ticked off uh, by 20 people regardless of which sample they got. So that, so that it seemed like the dark rye bread was not good at distinguishing the samples. And that doesn't make sense at all for me as a coffee person when I tasted the samples. So this comes down to the calibration of the panel. Uh, because it's really, really easy. You as roastmasters know that, that the baked taste, you know, if, if the coffee has been in there in, in development time too long, it's very easy to, to taste uh, uh, the baked uh, uh, yeah, aroma. But um, I think that's uh, down to the uh, calibration of the panel. Okay, I, I, I get the hook now, so uh, I better, uh, even though I've got five minutes left. Uh, question. Uh, question. Yeah. That's for questions, Paul. Yeah. Yes. Sorry? The panel, the sensory panel you used, were they at the University of Nottingham? No, 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 that's in Copenhagen. They like Copenhagen. Because I was going to say, uh, roasted rye bread for different people might, I mean, to roasted, toasted, sorry. Yeah. Um, could, there are just, to me, that, that culturally here, yes, I can understand, but in other places might not have the same. But they had a reference. Oh, they, they had, had, yeah, they yeah, had, yeah. They in, had in sensory them. science, you always have a reference. Yeah, no, but it's it's all the, I mean, you have the reference, but some people can yeah, 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 that's true. Back to yeah, but in Denmark, it should be pretty easy to nail because uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, after the you know porridge oats, it was yeah. rye bread. So. Uh, and then another really quick question: When you said um, the chemical analysis, um, were you doing chemical um, profiling of different roast profiles? Are you doing um, chemical kind of fingerprinting of different roast profiles? It's a GCMS, yeah. gas chromatography, yeah. so it's headspace analysis. Okay, <coughs> okay. All right. thank you. And that was done in, in Nottingham, but yeah, we, we can also do that at, in Copenhagen. I was going to say, because Simon Pearson, I think, does that in Nottingham, and um, I just wanted to know how, okay. uh, what kind of differences you found how specific the differences you found in the chemical analysis of the race profiles. Yeah. It could actually be a separate article. So we are making an article about the chemistry, okay. and then we are making an article about uh, the sensory. So there will be two articles. Uh, for well, this is really, really great talk, by the way. Thank you. Great, thank you. Will the article be available for public? No. Was that? Uh, it will be. Uh, it will be. Uh, you know, SCAE. We are, we are always doing. Uh, uh, Can you say the question again? Oh, sure. Sorry, uh, I was just saying, will the article, article be available for the public? It will. Uh, you can always buy the article by the, uh, uh, you know, the publisher, uh, or SCAE uh, gives you access to all the work that we do. Michael has a question. Thank you, Martin. Uh, I enjoyed the presentation. The question is about the work done by the lab in Copenhagen. Uh, this is precisely the approach taken by the Sensory Analysis Center at Kansas State, which developed the WCR sensory lexicon. I guess the question is about, um, uh, what's the word, uh, ca just calibrating the standards. It's the same thing, reference material uh, intensities, 1 to 15, it's the exact approach. They do it for dog food, they do it for, you know, for cosmetic products, for all kinds of food and be beverage sector products. Um, if you're continuing to do this work, will there be a move to uh, unify the standards that Copenhagen is applying with the Definitely. WCR? Yeah, the professor um, Bender uh, at Sensory Science in Copenhagen, he's been he's got really good uh, contacts with UC Davis. So so, and um, uh, we are in the process of getting an industrial PhD for Ida, my colleague, who is a sensory scientist. 
when it, you know, it comes to sensory performance, measuring people's ability, specifically on coffee. So we need to, you know, so, so we, we are going to spend a lot of time understanding references because that, to have good references are, um, is, is it's about all about training. So we will definitely work uh, in close contact with that. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's, 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 you know, it's the same tradition, uh, uh, yeah, same times of statistics and, you know, same approach. So the, the whole profiling uh, uh, methodology is developed, you know, in the, I think in the 70s. So it's definitely not new, but it's new perhaps to be that specific when it comes to coffee. Uh, so, so we are part of that wave and, you know, that's parallel with UC Davis and hopefully soon it's just, you know, the same wave. Great, so um, I hope to see you next year, maybe for a longer thing. So it's uh, very <laughs> yeah. good to have you, Martin. Thank you for coming. Thank you.